of verse number one. Paul says, Paul, I Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. I want to stop right there. And I want to use for a subject a called servant. A called servant. I know that uh, we as preachers put a lot of emphasis on being saved and sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost. But I want today to point out that and it may seem like I might be picking on preachers. I love preachers. I'm a preacher. But I did not understand until here recently what it is that I had actually been called into. So much is said about calling of an individual into the ministry of Jesus Christ. So many people want the call, but do not want the work or sacrifice that comes behind the call. In the A portion of this verse, Paul talks about being a servant slave. Slaves have no options. Slaves are required to do the bidding of the one that purchased them. Those of us that have confessed a hope in Christ are slaves to Christ. The ransom has been paid for our lives and we are forever indebted to Jesus Christ. But with that debt comes some distinctions. All of us may be slaves to the Lord, but there are those of us that have some distinction with our servant. What you talking about? Paul took the time out to not only call him or recognize that he was a servant of Jesus Christ, but Paul also says that he was an apostle of God. That word apostle comes from the Greek apostolos. Everybody say apostolos. That means either a person who is sent out or a person who is sent forth. An apostle is a representative, an ambassador, a person who is sent out into one country to represent another country. My brothers and my sisters, yes, I am a man. Yes, I, I, I hurt as you hurt. I feel as you feel. I get frustrated the way you get frustrated. I anger the same way you anger. But the one thing that distinguishes me to you is the fact that God has put an extra calling on my life. And even though I have these distinctions, even though I am just like you, God has distinguished me and said that you, I want you to be an ambassador. 
ambassador for me. And that means that even though I get frustrated the way you get frustrated, I can't show my frustration. That's right. Oh, that person preached Johnson. Even though I get angry the way you get angry, sometimes I got to withhold my anger. I can't show my anger. I cannot display my anger simply because I am an ambassador for the Lord. Now when I get behind my closed doors, I can tell you how I really feel. But while I am present, in front of the people of God. There is a distinction that I must have. And I'm using the personal pronoun I. That I must have because I can't speak for everybody. But I can speak for me. And let me also say this, I can speak for this poor people. Three things true of an apostle. Number one, they belong to the one who has sent them out. In other words, I am not speaking for myself. I am speaking and saying the words that God has given me to say to his people. He is commissioned and or paid to be sent out. In other words, God has already given me Everything it is that I need to have to say what I got to say. They possess all the authority and power of the one who sends them out. God has given me his authority to speak on his behalf. Listen, notice three forceful things. Paul said he was called to be an apostle. Listen, he was not, he was not in the ministry because, number one, he chose to be. In other words, this was not something that he went out seeking after. Many people see the ministry of Paul and are truly encouraged by his writings and his teachings. But most of Paul's ministry was written from a place of pain and anguish. Paul wrote most of his epistles locked up in jails and prisons. And while in prison, Paul was not kept where common criminals were placed. Rather, he was housed in the innermost parts of the prison where murderers, rapists, and other violent offenders were kept. How do I know? In Acts chapter 16, verse 24, Paul and Silas are thrown into the innermost parts of the prison. And the Bible says, and at midnight. Uh, that's a whole nother sermon for a whole nother day. Uh, Paul did not choose to be an apostle. And yet, it amazes me at the sheer number of individuals that still to this day seek to become ministers, preachers, and evangelists. Uh, they see the glory, but they have no idea about the story. You don't know what I had to go through and grow through to get to this place. You don't know the hell that I had to catch in order to be where I am today. You don't know the sacrifices that I've had to make for the sake of was not in the ministry because he chose to be in. He was not in the ministry because he had the ability. Many of us possess certain gifts and talents, but that does not mean that because you can sing, you can preach. It does not mean that because you can pray, you can preach. And it does not mean that because you can preach, you should preach. Many of us 
ought to be careful that we do not confuse skill and ability for calling. Amen. I say that one more time, and if I had a drink, I'd take a sip. Many of us ought to be careful that we do not confuse skill and ability for a call. See, we've gotten to a place and a point where we have we think that because we can do it, that we should be doing it. And my brothers and my sisters, that's a dangerous place for a fool like us to be, simply because we think that just because we can get out there and drive a car, that you should be driving. Some of us don't need to be on no road. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm preaching now, I'm preaching. God did not choose us because we had the, the ability to break down nuance of scripture. Scripture. God did not choose us because we had the ability to quote book, chapter, line, and verse. God did not choose us because we had the ability to fluctuate between keys and home real good. Yes, Paul was educated. Yes, Paul could speak and write very fluently. But that was not why God called Paul to be an apostle. He was not looking at Paul's ability, nor is he looking at our ability. Paul was not in the ministry because he chose to be. Paul was not in the ministry because he had the ability. And Paul was not in the ministry because he had been encouraged by others to choose the ministerial profession. Oh, Lord have mercy. I knew it was going to be quiet on this one. Ministry is not something that people can call you into. Amen. Be careful of the ones that have the uncanny knack to tell you what you should do and what you should be. Oh, you can sing so good. You should be a preacher. Oh, you can speak so eloquently. You should be a preacher. Oh, you sound almost as good as the pastor. You should be a preacher. Yeah, you better be careful of them. You should be. Come here, Lucifer. Let me talk to you. Oh, yeah, yeah he, 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 could, he could sing his tail off and he was able, he had, he, he was the leader of the choir and I'm, I'm pretty sure there was somebody that was growing up his head that said, boy, you sound almost as good as God do. Head gets so big, your shoulders can't hold it up, but we ought to be careful of allowing people to blow. I want to speak something over your life, crowd of people. Let me, let me, let me say this. Y'all better watch who it is that you call yourself letting speak into your life. Listen, 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 listen. God ain't gonna have somebody come and tell you something that he ain't already tried to tell you. My, my responsibility, my job ain't to tell you nothing new. It's to tell you something that he's already told you, you just wasn't paying it no attention. You done felt the love the Lord pull and tug at your heart, you just wasn't paying him attention. He done came and spoke and said, to you, you just wasn't paying attention. Paul was an apostle, a minister of the gospel for one reason only, because God had called him. Just like God called Paul, he has called others. In Genesis 12, 1 through he called, God called Abraham. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country 
and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee, make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. My brothers and my sisters, one thing that I that I have come to find out is that when God calls you, He will prepare the way for you. Okay, what you talking about, preacher? In Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, God called Moses. He said, Come now, therefore, and I will send, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou mayest bring forth my people. Of uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now we know the story of Moses and how Moses came up with every single excuse. He said, Master, I'm old. He said, That's okay. You're going to be all right. He said, Lord, I stutter. He said, Well, I'm going to give you your brother and you take your brother with you and you, your brother, can speak for you. He said, Well, Master, I ain't got who. When he asked me who it is that has sent me, who I'm supposed to tell him, he said, Well, you just tell him that I am sent you. One thing that I don't ever have to worry about is whether or not God is with me on my side because one thing that I know when I'm going forth in the way that God wants me to go, He will give me everything that I need. He will put the words in my mouth for me to say what it is that He would have me to say. In Judges chapter 6 verses uh, uh, 14 through 16, God called Gideon. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and that thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. My brothers and my sisters, look, I understand the circumstances that you come from. You ain't got all that much education. Lord, I don't speak all that well. Lord, I don't know how to do. Lord, I don't know what to say. Lord, my family is this, that, and the other. Lord, my family in the church is the last family that anybody would expect anything to come up out of. My daddy didn't mess up in the church. My mama didn't mess up in the church. My sisters and brothers didn't mess up in the church. There's absolutely no way possible that I can go forth and do anything that you would want or have for me to do. But my brother and my sister, let me tell you something right now. That God does not necessarily pick those that come from from high places. Come on, preacher, what you talking about here? You know that God chooses sometimes the least to make the most. What you talking about? I'm so glad you asked. He used David. David wasn't nothing but a shepherd boy. His daddy didn't even bring him before the man of God when the man of God asked, have I seen all of your sons? Okay, y'all still ain't rock. Y'all still ain't rocking with me. Jesus Christ himself, he came all the way down through 42 generations and came down and stopped off not in the womb of the queen of the nation, not in the womb of a wealthy family of the nation, but in a little girl who was betrothed to be married. She wasn't even with nobody. Dropped her off in her womb, born him in a manger, in a cattle trough. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to tell you. You ain't got to have a whole lot for God to do something big with Paul had heard and answered God's call. Listen, God did not override Paul's will. God wanted Paul in the ministry, so he called Paul. It is important to note that it was up to Paul to hear and respond. First of all, God did not force any of us to do what we are doing today. I'll say it again. God didn't force any of us to do what we are doing today. 
But God did make us an offer that we couldn't refuse. In Acts chapter 9, Paul received the call of the Lord. It was not a call to force Paul into the ministry. It was an attempt by the Lord to get Paul's attention. We must understand the difference between discipleship and ministry. Discipleship is not an option. I'll say it again. Discipleship is not an option. You cannot follow or believe in Jesus Christ and not follow after Jesus Christ. There is a certain way that we as believers must live that is reflective of the God we serve. He does not give options for that. But when it comes to ministry, we have a choice. And God does not interfere with our choices. Paul could have just as easily said that he does not want to be a minister while on that Damascus road. road. But the call of the Lord was so great that he could not and he did not refuse. Listen, two things. Every servant of God is called for two primary reasons. The first one is to serve and to minister. In Matthew chapter 20, the mother of James and John came to Jesus wanting one of her sons to sit at the right hand of Jesus and the other at the left hand of Jesus in his kingdom. Jesus said unto the woman that you don't know what you're asking. We got to be careful what we ask for. Let me say it again. We have to be careful with the stuff that we asked for. He asked the men if they could drink from the same cup that he drinks from. Can they be baptized with the same baptism that Jesus was baptized with? The men eagerly answered Jesus, yes we can. Jesus said to them that they shall surely drink from the same cup and be baptized with the same baptism but what they were asking for was not his to give but from the father that 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 that, that give us all it is his to give but he did leave them with this message in verses 27 and 28 and whosoever will be chief among you let him be your servant even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. My brothers and sisters, God did not call us to be served, but to serve. God, God, God did not call us to, to have all of everybody laying at our feet doing our bidding, but, but he called to be servants of his of his people. I find it so funny that 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 a lot of my counterparts in the ministry they got 15 and 20 armor bearers and two members. I'm just trying to tell you. I, I, I'm equal opportunity. If I'm going to get on y'all, I might as well get on us too. Okay. We got bishops and, and, and folks saying that this church and appointed them an apostle. How was, how, how was a church going to appoint you to something that ain't theirs? I know I'm stepping off into something. Y'all can go tell them after service is over that I said. I know I'm right about this. You calling yourself an apostle of this, that, and other church, and you ain't not one time walk with Jesus. You done walk with everybody but Jesus. Yeah. 
We got all of all of all kinds of pageantry and magistry going on on behalf of us, but ain't nobody serving the people. Ain't nobody reaching out. Ain't nobody trying to love and touch and go after it and chase after it and pursue after the lost. But I want you to come to my anniversary. Yeah, I said it at night, it's coming up. But I can't talk. If I ain't willing to step on my own toes every now and then. We have to be about God's business. You can't celebrate me if I ain't been doing what God told me to do. All right. All right. We have to serve and minister. And then number two, we have to go forth and bear much fruit. Jesus said in John 15 and 16, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Listen. Can I talk about this for a while? The problem that I think, and this is coming from the Gospel of Antoine Johnson, the problem that I think that we find in the church today is that we are not bearing fruit. We try to grow fruit. And it ain't my responsibility to grow fruit. I ought to be where the Lord has supplied. I ought to be standing with my basket as it comes down. Going out, plucking off, and bringing into the storehouse. That's why Jesus said that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We standing around waiting for them to come into the church. When we ought to be out there in the field, laboring to get them. I'm waiting for you to come in to the house in order to preach and teach and tell when in actual reality I ought to be out there in the grocery store at the barber shop in the beauty supply telling somebody about the Lord Jesus somebody about the goodness and his mercy. David said in Psalms 1 and 3 and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth fruit his fruit in his season that bringeth forth his fruit in his season that bringeth forth his fruit in his season not my fruit but God's fruit y'all not my people you all are God's people
he shed his leaf, also shall they not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's all I'm looking for, y'all. The one thing that I recognize, that if I'm doing what the Lord would have for me to do, is that whatever it is that I'm doing will prosper. It shall prosper. Listen, I can't go and do what it is that I want to do and expect that God is going to bless it. But if I'm doing what the Lord would have for me to do, if I'm saying what it is that God would have for me to say, then he will bless. It will prosper. And let me tell you something, I may not see dividends of it right now, and that fruit that Whatever it is that we do for the law, it shall prosper. And it shall last. As I come to a close here today, there was an author that wrote a book about growing up as a missionary in China. She took the time to write about an oil company that was opening up a new oil field operation in China and wanted to find someone to oversee the operation. They wanted someone young, university graduate, a proven leader, and someone fluent in the Chinese language. They located someone that they felt would be perfect for the job. He was a 28-year-old missionary, already living in the city where the company was planning to establish its office. The oil company offered the young missionary 10 times his current salary, but the young man declined. Uh, they raised the offer. And the young man declined them again. They offered him even more. But yet, he again turned them down. They offered him a nice car. They offered him a big house. They offered him all kinds of interesting packages along with the salary. The agent said, I've offered you everything I can think of and you won't take any of it. The agent asked him, said, if you won't take this, then what will you take? The young missionary said, it does not matter of the salary. The salary is real good. But the trouble is the job. Yeah. He told the agent that God had called him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, he would be a fool uh, to quit preaching. Uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to sell oil. Uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, I have been offered a lot of things. Uh, I have been given a lot of options. Uh, but the one thing I can tell y'all uh, is I would trade nothing uh, for my 
journey now. I've come too far to turn around now. God has been so good to me. I, I, I can't turn around. I won't give up and I won't give in. I'm a called servant. My brothers and my sisters.
He said, you sleep when you die. But as long as I put bread in your body, I got work for you to do. It took me a minute, y'all, to understand that. But I understand it now. And the thing is, is that some days I, I want to go back. Lord, if I can just turn back the hands of time. But God said, I called you. And I called you for a reason. You have to be about my business. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church is open. I remember Christian experience can be for baptism when you become my letter. The doors are open.